Alex. I looked down at my phone. Turn on the news, any channel. Something big is happening. If this text were from anyone other than my mom or the ambassador, then I probably would have dismissed the message as some kind of prank call or something. But this was from the ambassador. I looked back up to Ava and said, It's from the ambassador. He said to turn on the news and watch it. Something's about to go down. Their feathers puffed up in what I assumed was nervousness. Hopefully it's good news. I started climbing down the mech so that I could get to the computer on the desk. That's all we can really hope for in these unique and challenging times, I said as Ava watched me make the trek to the elevator at the base of the desk. You know, if I had a credit for every time that I've heard the phrase unique and challenging times, I would be one of the richest men out there. I was getting out of high school when aliens were found, and then it took a couple of years for me to get my mech license. And then I caused a galactic incident. I shook my head as I got into the elevator and finally got onto the desk proper. I don't want to live in interesting times. Wait, it took you a couple of years to get a license? What for? They asked, getting off the bed and sitting down on the chair next to the desk. It only took a moment for the computer to recognize me and another moment to open up the news broadcast just as it was starting. Yeah, those things are massive, and if you don't know what you're doing, you could accidentally hurt a lot of people, I said before shutting up. The opening jingle played as the words breaking news flashed across the screen in every language in the galactic community, including English. Doesn't matter where in the galaxy you are, news is still news, I thought to myself for the second time today. The same two anchors from before were back, the Godzilla-looking one and that beaver-lion-looking one, sitting behind the same desk as before as they maintained the same professional nicety that all people on the news seems to have down pat. Good evening, galactic community. I'm Chuzuk, the Godzilla one said. And I'm Jadriel, said the beaver one. Breaking news this afternoon as United Terra has released a statement regarding the war with the Yaleans just minutes before. They both stared into the camera as a transition played, and we were both looking at camera footage of the ambassador. The title card at the bottom of the screen read, Terran Ambassador Tobias makes a statement regarding the war. He stood at a podium that had the logo of United Terra on it, with the flag for United Terra behind them. He cleared his throat and began to speak. Good afternoon, members of United Terra and the Galactic Community. As of three minutes ago, a little over two-thirds of the Galactic Community has joined us in condemning the actions of the Yalayans in unjustly declaring war on United Terra and her people. We thank you for your support in these trying times and hope to continue to have profitable relations with you in the future. To the rest of you, we hope that you will come to our side soon in condemning the Yalayan Concord and their aggression towards us. He cleared his throat again. In other news, thanks to a covert operation, our military has successfully captured the Yalean capital ship, the Indomitable Crusade, and her crew. To the Yalean conclave, this monumental victory was perpetrated by 30 Terrans and two tactical nukes. Ten of those Terrans weren't even using mechs. If we can sneak onto the pride of your fleet and make it ours in less than an afternoon with those numbers, then just imagine what the full might of our military can do to you. I implore you to seek peace before this escalates any further, for Terrans are nothing if not devoted to peace. He gave a heavy sigh before looking back to the camera and smiling. Thank you for your time. The screen faded back to the two news hosts as they sat in silence for a second before speaking in their chipper professional tone. Compelling stuff. To give us a breakdown on the statement, we go now to our political and military correspondent, Cridlog. The screen transitioned once again, and on the screen was another one of the Godzilla-looking aliens. With the same practice professionalism of its co-workers, it launched into what it was going to say. Good afternoon, galactic community. As you have no doubt heard, the Terran ambassador has given a statement, and we will be breaking it down. The first thing of note was the number of species condemning the Yalean Conclave for their aggression. We've covered the specifics of what species have decided to side with the Terrans on this issue before, so we will not go into it. This does bring up the issue of why these species are doing this in the first place. As we all recall a few hours ago, the Terran representative to the Galactic Community Senate made an ultimatum to the combined species there. 
Fearing that they would lose a valuable trade partner, they possibly made the choice to maintain the relationship with the main supplier of raw materials in the galaxy, United Terra. I would call into question the sincerity of the Terrans' words due to them lying to the galactic community for the entire time they have been here. But Terrans have been nothing but direct and honest with their trading partners, so we can assume that it will stay that way. In addition to this, we have also been given definitive proof of the Terrans' claims about the Indomitable Crusade, as we have been given photos that released at the same time as the statement by the Ambassador. The camera panned a bit to include several photos of what I could assume was the Indomitable Crusade, docked with one of the most recognizable ships in our fleet. The Failure to Communicate. I had always loved that name. I started to lose focus, preferring to think about the Terran fleet, but forced myself to focus on the task at hand. As to the claim of the number of Terrans that captured the ship, I cannot make any comment on that right now. The last thing that the ambassador did was sue for peace, something that Terrans have advocated for the entire time that they have been here. How the various governments of the galactic community will react to this, I cannot say, but I do know that this will cause ripples in galactic politics and policy. That's all I have for now. Back to you, Chuzuk. The screen transitioned back to the two anchors. Chuzuk nodded and said, Thank you, Cridlog. It looked down at the tablet it had on the table before looking back up. That's all we have for now, but we will update you as the situation unfolds. Thank you, Galactic Community, and have a good afternoon. And with that, the closing jingle played and the channel went to commercial. Ava and I sat there in stunned silence for about a minute as we both took in the information. I shook my head and broke the stalemate. Damn, I knew the military acted quick, but I didn't expect a blow like that to happen within a couple of hours of war being declared. They really must want this over as quick as possible. Ava continued to sit in silence. They studied me more closely, seeming to regard me in a new light. Your military did this with that few men? They asked softly. Well, yeah. Minimizing casualties has been a thing in Terran military doctrine for a long time, and if command thought it could be done, then by God would it get done. The nukes did help a bit, I suppose. Why do you ask? They continued to regard me with that same look that I couldn't identify. You Terrans just love breaking the expectations that people have of you, don't you? They finally said. Ava. I looked down at the small alien. You Terrans just love breaking the expectations that people have of you, don't you? I asked. He threw his head back and cackled like a madman. Oh, Eva, you sweet summer child, you have no idea. It's a popular phrase on Terra to never let anyone know your next move. And us Terrans like being as unpredictable as possible. The way that he said it made my feathers stand on end, which was a feat because they were already puffed up to begin with. I was going to say something back to Alex when I heard a rumbling noise, one that I immediately recognized as my stomach growling. As soon as it subsided, I couldn't help but hear a smaller, softer rumbling coming from Alex. Guess you're as hungry as I am, he said with a chuckle. I chuckled. Yeah, I suppose you are. I haven't really had anything since this morning before the boarding, so I guess I'll go to the mess hall and then meet up with you later. Alex shifted in his chair on the desk before finally standing. Well, I haven't really had any alien food before, so could I go with you? Sure, I said as I put my arm out for him to climb on. He gave me a look. What are you doing? I retracted my arm, suddenly feeling self-conscious. Oh, sorry, we've done it like this since your mech broke. I just figured that until we know that you fixed it properly, that you'd want to do it like this. He gave a dismissive gesture. Hey, that's totally all right. Sorry that I sounded the way that I did. And besides, there's no time like the present to find out if what you did was even remotely right. And with that, he made his way to the elevator and went down it. I watched in interest as he slowly made his way across the floor to the other elevator next to the mech. How they get anywhere quickly is a mystery to me because they move so slow. He finally made it to the elevator and made his way up the mech past the still gaping hole in the chest of the armor. We'll have to fix that before it can be used in combat. That is assuming that the captain will even let him be security anymore. So, what are your plans after all this is over? 
Alex finally made his way into the cockpit and started pressing buttons before getting sealed in the overlarge head of it. It was only a moment before the speakers on the mech crackled to life as he said, You know, I haven't really thought about what I'm going to be doing once we make it back to civilization. I kind of assumed that I would be court-martialed for not following standard protocol and thrown into a jail. I was horrified. They'd do that all because you didn't follow exactly what they told you to do? Why? It was at this point that the mech, or at least its top half, started to move as it shrugged. This movement was muted somewhat by the fact that it was still being suspended off the ground by some thick chains. Well, secrecy is one of the most important things that we have going for us. For the longest time, people not knowing anything about us was our biggest strength. It still is, as far as I'm concerned. The mech shrugged again. After all, it was the Yaleans' lack of knowledge of our capabilities that got us that win so quickly. He paused for a moment. I'm getting green on everything that we fixed, so if you could help me move into the wheelchair, that would be greatly appreciated. I nodded before going over to the mech and straining to pull it off the hooks it was on. Alex moved his arms to help me as best as he could. This thing is heavier than I remember. Did you install anything other than the battery? I complained. Alex laughed. It's not my fault that you're tired and stuff. And thank you for being willing to help me. Yeah, well, what are friends for? If not helping each other when we need it, I asked, groaning under the weight. After a couple of awkward shuffles, I finally managed to deposit Alex with a metallic clang into the wheelchair that I had fabricated for him earlier today. He looked up to me from his seated position. Is that what we are now, friends? I rubbed the back of my neck. W well, only if you want to be. I mean, you don't really have anyone else on the ship that you trust like this. So I feel like that counts for something. He nodded once more. Yeah, I suppose that counts for something. He looked down at the ground for a moment before looking back up at me. It's kind of funny. They train us to have minimal interactions with aliens, so it's less likely that there'd be a leak. But as it turns out that those forbidden interactions were what caused you to run to my aid when you thought my suit was breached. He paused for a moment before reaching up to me for a Terran handshake. I'd be honored to call you a friend. I waggled my crest of feathers in joy as I took his hand and shook it. I'm glad to hear so. Now come on, let's get some food. Another laugh came from Alex as he wheeled himself to the door. Now you're speaking my language. I can't wait to try some alien chow. The door opened with a hiss, and I wasn't surprised to see a group of no less than 20 people loitering around the door. I genuinely thought that they would have given up by now. But here they were, communication devices in hand, trying to get a picture of the Terran outside of the mech. They all fell silent at the sight of Alex, not really knowing what to do. Did they not watch the news? I thought that they would have at least watched the news and figure this stuff out for themselves. It was finally Alex that broke the stalemate. Geez, you would think that you've never seen a guy in a wheelchair before with how you all are acting. Now are you going to keep standing there or are you going to let me go on my way? He asked. A few seconds went by with no one moving. Then, someone coughed and started moving away, which prompted the rest of them to follow behind, still mumbling about missing their chance to make history and the like. I walked with Alex as we got closer to our destination. Are you okay? I asked. He gave a heavy sigh as he pushed himself along. All my life, I've not had very many people pay attention to me, and I liked it that way. And now that all this is going on, I'm not sure that I like all the attention that I'm getting right now. He shrugged once again. I suppose that's the price you pay when you start making history. I suppose so. Better to make history than to be forgotten, I say. I explained as I looked down at the gunmetal gray of the mech. It is what it is, and there's nothing that we can do to change the past, so why regret it? We walked for a few more minutes in silence as we contemplated how our lives turned out. You know, I was supposed to be a ship mechanic, I finally said. Really? asked Alex, turning to me as we walked into the elevator that would take us up to the mess hall. Yeah, I said. I was supposed to take after my old man, but I decided the life of a ship mechanic was too boring for me, so I took the job that would keep me on my toes. There was silence for a time before Alex finally responded. Damn. I was actually supposed to join the army like my dad, 
but I somehow talked him down to ship security, so here I am. Maybe it would have turned out differently if I had just done what he wanted me to. He shrugged again. No point in crying over spilt milk. That must have been another Terran phrase. The doors opened, and we were greeted by the welcome sight of the mess hall and the extremely unwelcome sight of four Yaleans waiting by the elevator. Hey, it's him! One of them shouted as they caught sight of Alex. Aw, oh, shit, whispered Alex. Here comes trouble!